hey, it's uh, Joe Lines from The Automator with Isaiah here, also from The Automator. And uh, I, was, I was mentioning to him, I had this script that I had worked on years ago about how to copy, play, copy anything, you know, and then paste in plain text. And, and we're going to show you a really quick example here of why you'd care. And, and But like at TI, like the, this was one of the most popular scripts that I shared with people because they, they were like, oh my God, I, I copy all the time, paste in the notepad and then copy from notepad and paste because the program I'm using doesn't have this functionality. So why don't you go ahead and show them, Isaiah? Yeah, sure. So uh, the script that you uh, were talking about is, is here. It's, uh, you can find it on the automator.com uh, paste link text. Um, and this little script is very good because, for example, let's say you are on a website and you want to copy some things in there, right? So let's go ahead and just copy this part. And for any reason, you go to Word or any program that does this kind of thing and you paste that. And what is going to happen is that you're going to, the text is going to come up with all the formatting. Now, uh, right now, Word allows you to go ahead and change it to the normal uh, format, so paste it without formatting, but not all programs allow you to do this. And by the time this was written, <laughs> Word didn't have that capability either, right? So it was a very good solution at the time. Word fixed that, but there are many programs out there that haven't fixed that. So the script, what it does is that it's going to sit on your tray, right? And um, we decided to make it so that you can select a hotkey for it. You can select whatever hotkey you want. And when you press that hotkey, you're going to get the normal text. Like you're going to be plain text. It doesn't matter if it has formatting or not, because the script removes all formatting before pasting. And the good thing about it is that you still have the control B, the normal control B would paste the text with its formatting. So you have both. You have it control B and control yep. D without formatting. So basically you have both things if you want them, right? Yeah, that was the beautiful thing. It temporarily replaces the clipboard, pastes the plain text, and then restores the clipboard back with the original stuff in case you wanted it. Exactly. So yeah. So, so we're going to show you is how we could go ahead and how we updated that script a little bit, right? Yeah. Because the script is working perfectly fine. We didn't do any changes to the clip to this part in here. Right. What we did changes to is the fact that we actually created a GUI for it, and we demonstrate more or less the problems that come with creating a GUI, right. things that you have to keep in mind. It looks like a simple GUI, something very simple, but there's two things, adding a GUI and uh, saving your preferences, like the hotkey that you created, saving it for later use when the script starts. Those things introduce a little concept and a little problem that you should keep in mind. Right. Yeah. And, and just FYI, so we have a course, Intro to GUIs Without a Hotkey, right? Actually, I think it's called GUIs Are Easy. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and they are, but it, they do bring a little extra complexity. And that's what you'll see with Isaiah's working through the development of it. It's just a fun experiment where we show how to adapt a current script to giving it an interface where people can choose what they want and save it. Exactly. Enjoy. Hey guys, uh, Joe Lines and Isaiah is from The Automator, and we're, uh, we were working through, I was talking to him about adapting uh, this, one of my favorite simple, it's one of the things that, that people love the most, actually Isaiah came up with a new name for it, the naked, what do you call it, naked, naked, naked clipboard, naked clipboard? <laughs> the naked yeah. clipboard, um, <laughs> right, we're going to get banned on YouTube now, anyway, uh, and, and we, I said, let's convert it where we can, because I have it with control G, but let's convert it to where we can easily let people choose their hotkey for it um, and make a couple tweaks. So I, I, and then I thought, you know what, we're adding a GUI. Let's, let's show the process and talk through the process of adding a GUI because it's just a great, you know, it, GUIs are amazing yeah. and, and it helps, it helps your script be more viral, right? And that, so yeah, good. let's go ahead and see what you're doing. So first of all, the, the first thing that we're going to talk about is what kind of GUI I want. So basically it's just a, a very simple GUI that will allow you to select um, the hotkey that you want. So, and how would I show, how would I use that in a script that usually doesn't need a GUI? So the, the concept of the script is that you have something on your clipboard and when you press a, key, uh, uh, a keyboard hotkey, right, 
it's going to send the clipboard without any images and stuff because the clipboard can contain several stuff, right? So you want just the text, the plain text. That's what the script does. So I don't need a GUI for that. I just press a hotkey and that's it. So what? How can I convert that into having a GUI? The easiest way, let me go ahead and share my screen, is to add kind of like a, a probably a preferences uh, mm -hmm. menu. So I would put it on the script icon. I would add a new menu item that says like change the hotkey or preferences or something like that. And then from there, I have something that I could just have as a GUI, right? So that's the, the thing that we're going to be doing. The script has been pasted uh, came from the automator.com like this. I will do some things that are my preference, by the way. So we could just go ahead and select all the um, guys here and just move them, right? So that we could at least have them um, separated from the, the other code so that it is a little bit easier to read, right? So there we go. And the other thing is, if you want a hotkey to be kind of like dynamic, so you could change it for other things, then what you want here is either a label or a function. That's what you want. So let's change that to a label, uh, paste, make it, I will <laughs> name it. So the, the, the idea is that you're going to be pasting the plain text from the clipboard. So we're removing anything that is not needed. So we're, yeah. yeah, we're just go ahead and... Which is crazy because line five, that's what it does. And it's so simple, right? It doesn't... Line if you were to read this, you're like, what the hell are we, is he doing? That makes no, no line sense. Six, line six Sorry. would be the one, right? Yeah. yeah. So line six is the one that yeah. grabs the clipboard and pasted it in itself. And just by doing that, you basically strip every formatting and every, you're just going to get the, the empty text. No, so sorry, the text, right? Without formatting anything. So uh, the other thing that we're going to do, so let's go ahead and grab the um, a menu. So I have um, a standard menu here and this is text. I have it kind of like a, like a hot string that expanded, right? Cool. This is something that I usually add to most of my scripts. So for that reason, I just created this little, uh, <laughs> yeah. So we have the no standard that removes everything, check for updates about reload and exit. That's what I need. And in our case, let's go ahead and remove this icon. We're gonna use it for later. So let's go ahead and remove that. Um, I don't need about checking for updates, probably the about, I'm gonna do it later, not for now. I'm gonna keep the remove. So this guys, I don't need these functions for now. So I just need the reload and exit. And let's go ahead and add the menu, gray, and add, I'm gonna put here, say for example, uh, the preference, right? And let's go ahead and add that one to a GUI that we're gonna create. I think if you, if you don't put anything, you can use it as, your own thing. Let's go ahead and return here because I don't need anything. Go ahead and use the preferences as is, and let's we add the and we're gonna keep a you have control G as the main uh, hotkey that you wanted, and let's have here a variable. And on. There we go. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Show. And if I run this script, let's go ahead and save it first. When we run it, we don't get anything at the moment. Uh, here at the bottom, we have our. So let me go ahead and verify. Hold on. What is that? Yeah, so that's our script there. It's interesting that it didn't change the name. So here we have our, our icon, we have a right click. Now we have only the menu items that we are interested in, which are the one, the three that I left there. And the preferences should go ahead and try to create a GUI, but I forgot. 
if you use a function, you have to actually make it global because all variables that are that belong to a GUI must be global variables. So usually the solution to that is just to go ahead and set it to global. Now we have it here. Now what I'm lo looking right now is, how does it look like that? See, hold on. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is going on there because, yeah, so it's not adding the top key. Oh, what is that? I just typed something in there that didn't belong there. Oh, there we go. So there was an option in there that I typed by mistake. I don't know why I did that, but yeah. So now our GUI is already there. We have a hotkey control that will be used to capture whatever the, 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 the hotkey that the user want. And by the way, this little thing here does not capture the window key or the apps key. So if you want them to have access to those, whether to have the window key or the apps key, you can use those by using a checkbox, for example. So I don't care about the apps key right now. So let's go ahead and add a, a checkbox and we're gonna make it, uh, we're gonna make it uh, Windows key, right? And here, as I'm just adding a checkbox, let's go ahead and add 10 points to this one so that right now um, I have it. Now, usually I get really annoyed by this, but the, the size of this control is, you know, they, they do not line up as you want. Yeah. Usually gotcha. you just, yeah, so you, the only thing that you have to do is usually for the next control, right next to a text control or a checkbox, is Y previous minus three pixels. The difference between them is three pixels, actually. <laughs> Using the, the default sizes. So as soon as you do that, when you go ahead and do that, um, it's kind of like going to line up in a way that is kind of like centered. The checkbox is gonna be centered relative to the other thing. And let's just add a few more pixels there at the top so that we have our little kind of like uh, leeway over there. So that's what we're doing. So now we have kind of like a very basic uh, <laughs> uh, way for me to choose either if you have the windows and whatever letter you want. And the only thing that we need now is a way to capture that. So let's go ahead and set um, windows key. Current key here and let's add a button here usually i made it make it 75 save now usually that's the end of it like you don't need to do much stuff but i i would like to keep the hot key every time that i start the program that makes the program a little bit more complicated right so the save command is going to go ahead and uh save an, an any file or whatever you want, right? It can be like that. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and use the, the real definition function. That's the real definition of functions that are going to be called by um, a button like this. And usually I like to explicitly say what function is gonna be called just in case. So, what are we gonna do? First of all, we need this function to be global as well because we want to access the hotkeys, the, the, the variables that are here, right? So I want to access those. Uh, <clears throat> I want to name my window. For instance, default, uh, and let's make it new here. Let's grab that and make it here, default. That makes sure that I have the correct window selected always. And now that I have that, let's go ahead and do it submit. And that is gonna do a few things. So our first thing is to go ahead and set the hotkey that we want. So 
the hotkey that we want is going to be current hotkey. Hotkey, we're going to use current hotkey. And the label or function that we're going to be calling all the time is the paste naked. So that's what is going to happen. And that's it. You just have a, yourself a way to change the hotkey uh, dynamically. The next part that we want is just to save that information. Oh, by the way, and the window key, we have to actually check whether the window key is there or not. In that case, we just add that or blank and What I'm doing right there is if the window key is set, I'm gonna add the, the modifier. If not, if it is not set, I'm just gonna leave it blank. And that way, if you selected that during this, uh, the selection, then you're good to go, right? So after you have that, let's go ahead and save that information. So what we're gonna do is any write, and the value that we're gonna be uh, writing is the, is all of this because I want to make sure that I grab the whole thing. The file name is going to be whatever we want. So let's say um, settings, not me, I don't care. The section is going to be the keys section. Let's make it like that. And the key is going to be main hotkey, right? I don't care. It doesn't matter because in the end, that's the only thing that I'm saving. Right. But now the information is saved, return. Again, as I mentioned, as you want to kind of like have it so that when you start the program, it goes ahead and reads it, then now your program, when you start, after adding the menu, for example, now you need an e read, right? The output bar variable is gonna be the current hotkey just for consistency. So wherever I refer to the current hotkey, I know what I'm talking about. The file name is going to be settings, but I and I. The section is going to be hotkeys and the key is going to be main. And the default value, if there is no hotkey, is going to be control G, right? Hmm. That's it. We just we just created a program that not only does whatever you said, now we save the information into a file. So let's go ahead now, let's go and test it. Uh, this is the part where I just go ahead and break my script right away so that I know what is going on. Now, after this, this is the reason why I right away test because I forgot to do something. If I read the hotkey, what do I do with it? Well, I said, I go ahead and set it. Right. I have to go ahead and set the hotkey if you, if you read it. So let's go ahead and hotkey set that. That happens very often, you know, like you forget about. Yeah, well, you're doing very, stuff very, live. very, right. right. But you forget about yeah. very uh, basic stuff. And that's the reason why, even though you think you did a correct job, you just go ahead and do it again, just in case, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We run those scripts. And as you can see, my script broke here. And that's exactly what I want. Now, when I'm testing, what I do is predictions. I predict what is going to happen. If my prediction is wrong, something in my code is wrong. So my prediction here is my file doesn't exist, right? So I should get the control G hotkey. So right now, current hotkey is empty. When I press on this, current hotkey should have control G. Cool. Everything is good. I set the hotkey to use paste, paste naked. And now if I go here, right? So if I go, uh, I, I remove the option to feed the, the, the variables here, but in any case, uh, the hotkeys, whatever is set up at the moment, I just wanted to take a list of whatever is set up. Let me show you what I mean right now. So this bar, that's the thing that I was missing. So what I want to do is if I go ahead and do that, it should be control G. If I do a list bars, what is going to happen is that, um, let me just finish it. And now I have access to view what part keys have been set up. And I see that the control G is set up. And I assume that whenever I press control G, I should fall into this uh, uh, label here. So let me make a, a breakpoint here. Let me copy something to the, to the clipboard. I copy it. And now if I press control G, 
I did get everything, but my program didn't break. Let's go ahead and do this one. Come on. Uh, my program didn't break. Let's go ahead and let's make this break. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to break right about here. So whenever I hold control G, ah, oh, there it is. Now it broke. So now I know that if I press control G, it is going to my label. Yeah. So that tells me that it is performing the actions that it should perform anyways, right? So if I just go ahead and remove the breaks and hit okay, it should paste. And I know that if I pay, if I copy from Excel or something, what I'm gonna get when I press the control G. So that is working fine. I know that that is working fine. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our preferences window. So I have my preferences window. I have to fix this a little bit later on. Um, let's make it easy. A windows that tests both things at the same time. I just want to know if the window gets taken. So my hotkey should be Windows A. When I hit save, I want to go ahead and take a look at what happens here. So whenever you modify code, the things. So even your list virus would have shown you, right? Wouldn't you? No, because I am not. I will never go back to this part of the program again. This part, when, no, 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 you will never, because as you're in a GUI, that GUI is always calling this function. That's the only part of the program that you will be able to access. You will never go back. Up right, here. but I thought you had to reload it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you don't have to reload it. That's okay. the beauty of hotkeys. And now, yeah. just by doing this, just by doing this, by using hotkey dynamically like this, I can... Um, I can, um, now, now this gave me an, an interesting problem that we're having, and it is that the old hard key is not being on set, and you should. Ah, so, right. so you see, you see sure. those are the, yeah. that's the reason yeah. why you test, because I was not right. thinking about that. I just test the new hard key, right. yeah. Right. At some point, yeah. you're going to have it. like many hard yeah. keys. <laughs> right. Everything does right. it, yeah. Right, so, 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 so that's the reason why I test. Now I have my script running again. Now let's go to the preferences. Now I have my Windows A, I save, and now you can see that I'm breaking inside the save. So now my current hotkey should be A, Windows key should be one. So I set the Windows hotkey, I set the current hotkey, and that should now make Windows A my new hotkey. And now this is the part that I wanted to test. What happens when I go ahead and any right? Oh. So sure. now that I any wrote that, I should get kind of like a new file. And where is that? That is in the desktop. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the desktop. And yeah, there it is. So I have an ini file. And that ini file now has a, a, a thing. It has your main, right? So everything is saved. Now my next test is when I go ahead and rerun the script. Now I want to make sure that it is being read, right? So. We rerun the script, and if I go to my hotkeys, it should be Windows A. So it is doing everything correctly. Now it is reading instead of having Control D. Now it's having the one that is on the seat in the settings file. So everything is working fine right now. Cool. The now, one thing that we need to do is just disable the old hotkey. Right. So for doing that, that means that I need to save what my current hotkey is. Whenever I start the program, I know that current hotkey has um, the old value, right? But when I do a GUI submit here, I lose that old value. And we can test that, but let's, I, I by experience, I know that that's what, what is going on. So I'm gonna have old hotkey, or, well, I can put it there, hotkey, and we're gonna do old hotkey, right? And what we're going to do is stop. That was, that was my answer. So that's it. And that I want to do it before I do the GUI submit. So because the GUI submit actually overwrites that error. That's the reason why you don't not, it's very um, annoying to use global variables because one thread can modify the that's same. True. Right. So that's the reason why you don't like working with global things. This command modifies that global variable. So basically, the best way for you to do it is this current hotkey should be something a little bit differently named, probably old hotkey or something like that. 
just for you to not have this problem. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and break here. Um, let's do this part here in which if I hit save, that's win A. I don't know why that was different than that. Um, but now my current hotkey should have Windows A, right? Windows A, um, that's the old hotkey. I disable that one. And now when I do GUI submit, now current hotkey should have something else. In this case, I just selected Windows A again, so that doesn't make any sense. Let's go ahead and redo it. Um, paste preferences. And there's a little bug here, which is that I'm not setting up this to what it currently has. Start reading it, yeah. Right, yeah, so I will fix that as well. I have Windows A is the old one, and the new one is Control G with the Windows T as well. So that's what it is, Windows Control G. So this is working fine. I know that that is working fine. Now let's fix the other part. That is to that when that we up. create, yeah, so this part here should right. be also kind of like um, a variable that has the current hotkey. Again, as I am using a global variable, I know that at the beginning of my script, I saved this current hotkey there. Mm -hmm. And as this function is global, I have access to that. So it should now put the old variable there. List bars, let's just go ahead and have it as a hotkey now. Just to make sure that I could access it whenever I want. And now, if I go ahead and uh, open up my preferences, it should fail, of course, because the current hotkey contains the window key, that's what happens. So let's go ahead and pick that. Let, let's let's do one other tweak that'll, I think it's a smart one and it'll also just make your troubleshooting easier. Let's let's make the, uh, the default action, if you click the icon, it'll pull up the preferences. All right, yes, of course. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So that's by making the try icon uh, the default. So we're gonna create one of them to be the default. And as soon as you do that, it would be, um, so what I'm going to do to fix this issue is that I'm going to regular expression replace. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to do two things at the same time. The haystack is going to be my current hotkey. The current hotkey, I want to remove the window key from that text because I don't need it for the hotkey variable, but I want to catch whether it happened or not. If it happened, then window key here check um i think it's either check or check that varies depending on the control but the check here might be by uh when he you can use a variable like this to whether have it on or off and this thing is going to be and as this is global this win key, if you set it once, is always going to have the same value. So I want to make sure that it, it has the value false sometimes. I don't do that sometimes, and I say true, even though it isn't. So this should fix the issue. Um, I would always check this with check or check. That usually yeah. happens, right? So if you go ahead and have yeah, check three or check if you use a number. So zero, one or two. Oh no, here it is, check. <laughs> so that's the thing. If you say check is one thing. If you say check is another. So that's the thing. I know that you could do it, but they mean different things. Right. So now um, let's run it again. We are missing a parenthesis here. That's where we're missing. And now, if I go to preferences, I do get the window, but I'm not getting the variable here. So let's go ahead and break here and see what is going on. Because this current hotkey has window A. Oh, because after I do the replacement, I have to save it. Ah, no. So after you do the replacement, just go ahead and save it so that it doesn't have it so that this doesn't break. <laughs> so we are doing that. Let's go ahead and 
preferences. Now we have the window A, which is the hot key that I had before. So let's go ahead and click Control G as we had at the beginning. Save it. What is going on? Yeah. As I am replacing the current hotkey, that's the reason why you don't use global variables because now this is gonna actually use whatever you had. So let's make this the old hotkey. Old hotkey is the one that I'm gonna put here and it's the one that I'm gonna save here. That should fix the issue. Oh, hold on, look, that should fix it. That's the old hotkey, hold on. That's my current and the old hot key. Let's grab it completely. Old hot key. Okay. So the old, I want to grab whatever it was that I had completely before I do any changes. Now, right now, the one that I want to put in the control is the current hot key, which is going to remove the windows, which is the one that is causing issues. But when I go ahead and turn off the hot key, it should be the old one, the whole thing that it was before, okay, right? So, okay. right, yeah. right. So now if I go ahead and do it again, I have Windows A, let's go ahead and put Control G here, not with that. That should turn off the old one and create the new one. So now, if I hit list bars, I should see the hot keys, yeah. this one that is off, and the new hot key that is Control G, right? And if I restart the program and I go to the preferences, I should get the control G, but I don't know why I'm getting the windows there. That shouldn't happen because I didn't have windows at that point. So for some reason, this one decided to be true, even though it isn't. Now, if I re run the program and I go to preferences, my current hotkey says control G, right? Yeah. That shouldn't be true at any moment, but for some reason. It's getting in there. That is true, right? So you see that? No. <laughs> oh, hold on. You know what happens? I think, hold on, no, no, no. Um, maybe? Oh, if it's true, it just... It, the... if, there, if it does a replacement, right? But I, I, I understand that this, it, it didn't do any replacements, right? Because at the, at the moment, it is gonna stay exactly the same as it was before because there was no replacement. But I think the regular expression replace um, returns the return of that, of that thing. Um, return, a version, okay, so as it is returning, um, the count. version, if yeah, so it, re yeah. it returns the same yeah. variable if it didn't replace it. Right. That's the reason why it's falling right. as true. Right. But what we could do is um, bar count here is the one that I'm. What so I'm, no, if it's greater right. than right. zero. So right. basically, right, exactly. So basically, I would put this. Hold on, I'll put this outside of the if state, if statement, and here, let's go ahead and make it blank, and now. Count, if yeah, count, count, right? Count so that's present. right. Zero. So if there was a replacement, then do that. I think string replace would work good in this situation, right? Because string replace, um, but the problem is that I want doing, to replace, but but I need the replacement string, right? Yeah. yeah, and we're doing something so simple that it, it's not overly complex where you don't necessarily need the regex, but anyway, um, you got it. Yeah. Right, but the problem with, with the problem is that I'm doing two things with this regular expression. That that's the issue. I am right. doing two things. So I'm counting how many times I replaced it to see if it was replaced, and I also grab the new string. With string replace, I can only do one of them. That's what happens. So in any case, I just go ahead and let's go ahead and do this preferences. Now it should be zero, right? So now it should be false, right? Yeah. Cool. And now I should get, I should get yep. my correct thing. So yep. everything is working as intended. Let's go ahead and add the thing that you were talking about, which is that we have press F preferences should be default. And I, if I remember correctly, um, um, let me go ahead and double check on that one because I haven't done that in a long time. Um, many default, I think it is not trade, it's default like this. So let's go ahead and double check on that. So let's 
So we have uh, default. That's exactly it. So oh, the menu name goes first. That's the problem with those commands. That it is it's exactly as they thought, but it's the other way around. Um, so yeah, it's many preferences. Is that and then while we're in there, look in. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, it is wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. That's right. wrong. It is menu tray default preferences. Ah. That's how it goes. Cool. So the first one refers to the menu that you're talking about, what you're going to do with it, and what's the thing you're talking about. So that's it, it is sometimes a little bit confusing, but yeah, that's what it is. Now, yeah. if, uh, if I go click on it, um, let me see. I get mine, so let me go ahead and close it. And if I double click on this, I get the window, but I want to make it that it is just one click, isn't it? With one click or double click? Either way, but yeah, I, I think you're right. Like a one click would be, why not? Right, right. So, so basically with a default, let me see, hold on. There was a way that you could, it's the following. There is one, I, I forgot about how you can make it so that it is one click. But in any case, yeah, you can do that. You can actually go ahead and make it so that only with one click. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. No, no. In any case, the, the other I, one yeah. that, that I'd like to do is to, I, I put it in Telegram, I put a, a tray icon using the image res .dll, which should be on almost everyone's computer. Um, I right. think it's the, like a clipboard icon, which will be a little more useful. And what, what I was thinking was because I think like me, most people will love this script and never not want it running. Why don't we add the preferences to say display icon or not? Okay. Use in this case. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. So. Right. So you you're talking about what? I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying this for me. This script is something I always want running, and I wouldn't necessarily want a separate system tray icon for it. So we should oh, let right. people choose if they can add something to the preferences that says do you want to you know have it to say the tray, tray icon, icon, right? So yeah. yeah. Um. So the menu. Which here, of course means we need a hot key to kill it also. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's how, now you see how scripts kind of like start getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, right. It is not that somebody goes ahead and writes the whole thing. You yeah. just go ahead and start adding a few things let's, little by little. Let's not right? worry about the, yeah, let's not worry about the no no tray icon because they want to get to preferences. So let's, let's, I think in reality, it's, it's fine. It's but, okay but, for now, yeah. right? So, but later on, if we need to do more stuff, like we would go ahead and start adding. Now, we did have um, this other object that adds the about and the right. update. We just have to include that. We're not gonna do that right now, but fine. all yeah. those things, all those functions that are down here depend on that other uh, um, script object, but for now, this script is already done. You just have something. There is the icon down here that now has a clipboard thing um, so that you could go ahead and use the reload. We could just oh. fix this to look a little bit more prettier or whatever. But I think that's OK for now. That's a very good starting point, right? Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Thanks, man. So you're welcome. We're going to be talking to each other later. Sounds great. Cheers. Bye.